Uh, we took a little bit of a longer break than we expected there. Uh, it was uh, mostly the result of trying to get players together, trying to get players uh, woken up for their next match. And um, yeah. that's still kind of ongoing. So uh, our next match will be um, in, in a few minutes here. It is going to be Trump versus Bunny Muffins. And you're talking about how Bunny Muffins is on edge and stuff. Is he, is he really like... Is he terrified of, of, of the mayor of Value Town? Is he just shaking his boots? What's going on there? Well, I think it's mostly about the timing. Um, like, because the timing of the tournament is to fit both N NA and Europe. And um, for NA, for US, it's basically pretty early in the morning um, on, on one coast, I believe. And for mm -hmm. Europe, for Europe, it's really comfortable because we start at 6 p.m. And um, it's only bad if, if a European player gets uh, to the finals because that will be like somewhere around midnight or 1 a.m. So they can be um, a bit tired. But for NA, it's, it's harder to be there in the morning. So that, that's why you mentioned one of the players was actually trying to wake up for his match yeah. uh, a bit early. And Bunny Muffins, I was actually happy with his timing, but still we got like a, a bit of a mix up with, with the hours. So he wants to finish the match as soon as possible. That's why he is ready with his decks and you know energized to like finish Trump as soon as possible. We'll see if uh, if it works out for him. Uh, Trump's Chip, Chip, gonna win. Trump's gonna win for sure. He's the, pro the problem is if he wins versus Trump, then he will have to next. Uh, he will have to wait for his next match, and then if he wins, he will have to wait for the final. So maybe that's not something he really wants to do. Yeah, that can be a little bit tough. As for the next match, uh, Bunny Muffins again is playing Hunter Paladin Warrior and Trump is playing Hunter Shaman Warlock. Trump was the only player in the tournament to bring Shaman uh, and it wasn't anything new. It was uh, kind of what I expected, the, the mech Shaman. And it seems like when players choose Shaman these days, uh, like it, it seemed like they were a bit more adventurous several months ago, but these days it's just the, the mech Shaman. Uh, it's a pretty cool deck to watch in my opinion. Uh, but I, I'm just hoping that, you know, um, I kind of miss the, tur the tournaments where it's like, you know, this, this huge tournament and this one very well-known player builds an entirely new deck that no one is prepared for for the tournament. You know, it's really hard to, you know, kind of step into the meta with a deck like that when it's so developed, when it's so evolved, when it uh, gets refined so quickly. I think it actually happens by the end of... Uh... Before BRM, I think um, I was casting some some tournaments, and then players somehow got adventurous, and mm. we've seen a uh, face warrior being brought and some really weird decks. But uh, I, I I basically I, I do follow up what you're what, what you're saying. Like uh, having those new decks, new ideas being brought to the tournaments is pretty cool, and we mostly have it after the expansion being released when uh, yeah. everything is shaping up. Yeah, it seems like the the meta kind of. Um you know, stabilizes extremely quickly uh, these days. People, you know, figure their things out and kind of, you know, share that information with as many people as they can as soon as they really figure out what's going on. In terms of lineups though, uh, Bunny Muffins is running, I believe, the typical hunter, typical warrior, and then the super aggressive paladin with divine favors. But I actually didn't see Jeeves in that Paladin deck. Um, did he just not draw it, or uh, do you no longer play that card? It feels like without outside of the bracket of what we consider the really strong ones, I just uh, I don't have that much faith in that deck, to be honest. Um, I have more faith in the Mech Shaman, which is notoriously inconsistent, uh, <laughs> as everybody who plays Hearthstone uh, already knows. It is, it is. What do you think about Fell Reaver, by the way? Fell Reaver is pretty good. Yeah, I mean it works in that deck. Um, I'm kind of a bit scared to play the card in Arena, but often when I do, it pays out big. So, yeah. So, Crip, a role player Sorry. question, because you played WoW. Uh, do you think like the Fell Reaver card actually gives away the Fell Reaver feel from um, TBC? Mm. I feel like the Fell Reaver feel in TBC was kind of like surprise you're screwed type of card. It was more like a king crush in uh, in TBC than it is in Hearthstone. What do you think? I think it's, uh, well, when somebody plays a Fell Reaver, you see it's really massive and 
it's really hard to stop it. So I think it actually gives away the feel. Like I, I, I know what you're saying. Like you, you basically, you don't see for a river and then you're dead. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when you see for a river, you see basically the Hearthstone card just approaching you and hitting for eight. Should have four. Haunted Creeper with Juggler, an amazing combo as well. Do you think the uh, Mad Sign is better than Haunted Creeper here? I think you want to get the secret earlier um, to filter your deck and not uh, risk a possibility of drawing into the secret. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we see Trump's hand there. Um, it doesn't seem particularly strong. He's got some of the pieces, so it's not particularly weak. Uh, it's just that the opening few cards don't work so well here. And whatever gets buffed by the Power Mace is going to get countered by the Silence. Yeah, I think it's um, it's a decent hand. You, you have a, a good curve. You will be able to play that Power Mace, buff something for sure. You have the mechs. And there's the Flame Tung Totem, a card that surprised you uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. It might work as well. It's a, it's a good Shaman card. So if Trump decides to do some totems along the way, Flame Tung Totem might be used. Okay. Not that explosive, though. It seems more like a mid-range hand, right? Yeah, I just feel like uh, in this situation, I'd much rather be the Hunter. Yeah, Hunter was always good versus Shaman. Cards like Unleash the Hounds or Explosive Trap. Uh, we don't know what exact traps Bunny Muffins is playing. I think he is running... I think he's running the trap. Double Freeze. Yeah, Double Freeze and probably a Snake, I guess. All right, well, the Alec comes down. Um, so if you're Trump here, I think playing the Power Mace is pretty good. You can Power Mace down the Owl this turn to remove the Beast on the board. And uh, then you can Spider Tank and Earthshock the Mad Scientist next turn. Yeah, um, I would probably prefer the Power Mace as well. Okay. Well, he does this play. It, it results in him taking less face damage, but it makes him vulnerable to a Houndmaster. But Earthshock was a must. You definitely had to Earthshock the Mad Scientist. Not only you kill a minion, but you also deny the secret, so that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm really curious how Trump will play out this game, because normally this Shaman is just a face Shaman. He just goes to face and finishes the game with Crackles, Lava Burst. Right. But it seems like a mid-range fight at the moment, where you yeah, have a lot of minion trading. That's kind of the position you want to force the Shaman in. Uh, any deck that's built on like going face uh, and has to start trading, you know you're doing pretty well. Oh man, Crib Bunny Muffins is up for some monkey business. Okay. There is a Makla in this deck. We've seen it yesterday. That's his favorite card. Oh wow. That is a pretty good uh, Shredder outcome. Especially if it absorbs two juggles, which it does. <laughs> He's just shaking Bunny his muffins. Head. Yeah. He's like, Come on, man. <laughs> the juggler is still going to die. I did my he, best. He literally could have killed like a millhouse mana storm, but he couldn't kill the stealth creature. Poor juggler. Never lucky, Bunny Muffins. Uh, but Trump can't really clear the whole board, even though it's nice to kill the juggler. There's a lot mm. of those small minions, and they're going to consistently deal damage. It's not only that, it's the fact that um, when Mukla comes down, uh, Trump really has nothing for it. That's true, and he will not have a minion as well, so we'll not get uh, the banana value. Oh man, Leok is actually the best one. <laughs> yeah, Leok would be massive. It's still looking good for Banana Muffins though. Now he has yeah. three minions. A couple the, of weakness, the weakness of the Shaman is that it has almost no comeback mechanics. And when you're behind that much against the Hunter, it's very unlikely you're going to be able to win. I wonder if Trump is playing one Lightning Storm. Like, usually a Mech Shaman does not play any of those because no. you want to control the board with your minions, but sometimes people take one in. I think actually the truth is you don't be, you're not really bothered to control the board at all past like the third turn. Okay, there's a snake trap, which is not terrible as well. And I'm just gonna... No, it's not great. It only spawns two snakes. Yeah, it's not great, but it's not terrible. It's some minions, some damage. 
Yeah. He's just going to kill the warrior again and um, try to end up in a situation where Paladin, his last deck, and Paladin just needs to win one game versus maybe two or three decks. Uh, well, the players have locked in uh, Paladin versus Shaman, and this is a match I think nobody expected that they'll see in uh, any real tournament these days. But here we are, and uh, we're about to get into it. Uh, this is a pretty interesting one because, um, you know, both. Uh, decks kind of try to be aggressive, but the Paladin is significantly more consistent. And the Shaman often has cards that you try to save until the end of the game to finish the game. And those cards are a real liability against Divine Favor. So I kind of have to say that this is extremely one-sided towards the, the Paladin. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. And um, it's interesting that you mentioned Divine Favor because we discussed it before with how good Divine Favor will be against aggro decks. But as mm -hmm. you mentioned, like Shaman does keep the Lava Burst, Crackle, and uh, not playing them immediately. Yeah, yeah. I played um, I played basically this Paladin deck in the very early stage in Hearthstone. It's like the first BlizzCon. And um, Shaman was like one of the easiest like matchups in the game. Just because they did have so many situational cards with the overload mechanic. You know, people say that Shaman as a class has a problem with card draw, uh, but it really doesn't because most of the cards are just really slow. So you, even though you don't draw much, you don't uh, actually run through many cards, and that becomes a massive liability against Divine Favor. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, but what do you think about those hands uh, for the moment? Like, Trump missed turn two, but he was able to, to kill the Leopard Gnome, so deny damage. Uh, and maybe with this, oh man, Master for Battle. No Lightning Storm for Trump in the deck, possibly. Certainly not one in hand. Mm -hmm. So I guess this time he will just go face. Because it seems like last game he was mostly trading minions. He didn't yeah. have a chance to, to go face, but now it's just being more aggressive will be beneficial to him. Yeah, that's how you have to play to win this, this game. Uh, Buddy Muffins is like one mana behind here. Uh, he can't clear the board and play Mukla, which is usually what you want to try to do. Uh, he can't Kings to clear the board, he's one mana off of that. Uh, so it's just kind of a bad turn. Uh, how do you make the best of this one? I think you have to kill um, the mech. So basically you play Deckhand, you attack uh, three, like Deckhand and two minions into the, um, the spider. Then you kill the Cogmaster with the weapon and you do that. So you end up with two dudes and a weapon um, against a clear board. So you, you're still ahead on board and damage, mm. you take one less damage, uh, two, two less points of damage because of that. I mean, I kind of get that having a board so you can kings next turn, but also this play seems to be okay just outnumbering the shaman, knowing you can't get cleared on the board. You basically guarantee having a king's target as well. Yeah, it, it was a fine play as well. But basically, whenever you are ahead on board and you force your opponent to trade into your minions, you'll be happy. Because you'll continue using your minions to deal damage to the face and your opponent will be uh, defensive. By the way, Trump is playing a Doomhammer that's uh, pretty ballsy in this Harrison Jones metagame. Yeah, but is Bunny Muffins actually running those uh, anti-weapon tech cards? I don't think there were any in the previous deck and I don't think there's any in this deck. Actually, you're right. We haven't seen Harrison from him, and uh, in this deck, you don't care about weapon removal. It will matter if Trump advances and faces other players who do run the weapon removal. But for now, that's a lot of damage coming to Trump's face. I think I'd trade that. Yeah. Yeah, this is basically the situation I think we both expected Trump to get into, where he's behind on the board. He's up against a hand with Divine Favor, and I uh, think it's just overall looking extremely badly for him. I think for him to win this match, he would just need the Paladin to draw very badly, and would basically need the perfect opener. Yeah, like Coin McWarper into turn two stuff, like Anoyoshon. But he didn't get it, he just got the um, Cogmaster into turn to nothing almost. Mm -hmm. So it seems, yeah, I agree that this game is, is over. There is so much damage incoming, like, you just even can blessing this turn. Abusive to, for a perfect curve. 
and then divine next turn. Yeah, you bait. I mean, and Trump is overloaded, so it's not like he can really do much. Uh, the only thing you can really do is like top deck an earth shock, and even then, like, what are you gonna play with it? <laughs> Nothing. Just concede. Maybe you throw yeah. a banana for fun. Oh man, Trump with the suicide play there. Uh, there really, there really was nothing Trump could do. That matchup, I mean, we we thought it was absolutely terrible matchup. It seemed even worse than ex than what we expected. Yeah, it was just so one-sided. Um, but it, he got a bad hand, and uh, Bunny Muffins got a, a really good one. So mm -hmm. in this kind of matchup, that's uh, that just has to happen. And Bunny Muffins is left with his. Warrior, the green patron warrior that we've seen. Uh, yesterday he was favoring card draw. Uh, he was just throwing that Warzone commander, throwing the combo pieces away. Uh, that was a pretty interesting play style, but I think it's one of the very valid ones um, that are available to players. So, mm -hmm. patron versus free decks of Trump. Do you think Trump can still take it with his lineup versus patron? I mean, it's first, of course, he can still take it. Um, I feel the, the mech shaman out of out of uh, the decks Bunny Muffins has, uh, probably works best against the Grim Patron Warrior, just applying a lot of pressure. Um, if you don't have answers with that deck, you're just gonna get totally run over. So I think Trump obviously has a chance, but at the same time, it is Grim Patron Warrior and it has to lose three consecutive games. I mean, people regard it as the best deck for some reason, and Bunny Muffins, I think, I think out of everything he did yesterday, the most impressive thing was uh, how he played Grim Patron Warrior, um, how he valued draw over combo pieces. And um, I mean, it really worked out for him. Uh, so I'm quite confident that Trump will not make it through. And uh, well, I think we're gonna lose our, uh, our star dude, guys. Yeah, then we will uh, have our hopes on Gara and Lothar, but Trump is still in, he's not dead yet. And he will fight against uh, Green Patron. And you know we've seen Green sure. Patron lose in the past. Like we have one of, in one of one of the leagues. That was the worst deck with the the worst uh, win rate. It's true. It's true. But um, it is a deck that we saw even in this tournament several times already. That uh, the difference in your ability to play the deck uh, is is really the biggest factor. I don't think it's a weakness of the deck. It's just so complicated that. Uh, I think a lot of losses are the result of um, just, I, I don't want to say bad play, but less than ideal play. And because the deck is so complicated, often, you know, we, we don't even notice this. Like, uh, even mulligan decisions, that kind of stuff, it's really hard to pinpoint it. But players who are good with this deck are great with this deck. And I have some feeling that um, Bunny Muffins may be one of those. That's true. Uh, but as you said, like this matchup should be uh, going into Trump's favor. Uh, he has a pretty good opening as well. Carved a master into a spider tongue with the coin and then power mace. Uh, that's a lot of pressure coming from Trump in the early turns. Mm -hmm. Oh man, even pilot the shredder. Into pilot the shredder into feather reaver. That's actually one of the best openings I've seen uh, for this deck. And um, for body muffins there. He got a weapon, which is important versus aggro decks. You want to, to kill as many minions as fast as possible. He might think about denying the mech here. Just going for the spider tank. And uh, he's not losing Armorsmith to that. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good call. It also makes uh, Trump's power mace play kind of weak. Hmm, there is a mech warper, but you might still go with the power mace because on four you play pilot shredder and you buff it. And in mm -hmm. theory, you you also save your cog master. Do you? The cog master goes into the creature. Well, the question is if firework is going to kill the cog master. Do you want to kill the one one at this point, or do you want to save it for something bigger? Hmm. Okay, so for Bunny Muffins, the play might be... I... Personally, I would go Acolyte of Pain and Inner Rage, because I have to... Like, he has Torison, and I would like to have more um, Torison value. So draw into those combo pieces. He decides with the Frotting, because that's some kind of board, and uh, Power Mace will not be able to kill it. 
and he's fighting versus aggro, so I can understand that play as well. It's like, how much do you value damage? And he values it a lot versus his deck. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, uh, the, the draws here for the Acolyte plays are pretty damn good, man. That make it so the, the Frothing can kill the Piloted Shredder while drawing two cards. Yeah, I think Battle Rage is decent, especially because you want to play Torison next turn. Yeah. And if I want Acolyte is contesting this 2-3, there is nothing else to, to kill it, so Trump will have to trade into it. And he might go with the Fellow Reaver. If there is no Execute, the Fellow Reaver will be really troublesome. Uh, Unstable Ghoul is maybe a way to block it, but we can see there is a Rock Batter as well as a counter. Yeah, he has to try though, he has to go for the Ghoul. Um, and with the Ghoul, he goes with the Acolyte to try to get even more draws. Yeah, Bomb Enough is really sticking to this playstyle that really worked out against uh, against Ecop earlier in the tournament. But will it work again here? He's going to take so much damage. I feel like this might not be the best deck to play at this pace. Is this... Is there a lethal possibility with... Uh... If he hits six damage with the crackle, well, he's overloaded right now, right? Oh no, he's not. He, he just played a totem. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I've, he's not expecting uh, so much burst, and a crackle is random as well. So it's not there's like nothing random about this. This is a 100% lethal. Yeah. All right. This, sure. Trump uh, finally pulls a win with the Mech Shaman. I was expecting him to ban him up. It was a six. <laughs> yeah. He missed Lethal. Uh, passively. Yeah. W was passively. you crackle last turn? No, I don't think so. I think his play was totally right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, Trump puts a point on the board. Um, it's uh, maybe a start to the comeback. Uh, it is it is possible here. I felt like the Shaman was the strongest matchup against the Warrior. Um, in fact, all the matchups are okay. It's just that uh, I feel uh, Binding Muffins knows how to play Grim Patron Warrior, and it's just unlikely to lose three games in a row with it. Uh, but, I mean, who knows, man? Who knows? It may happen. It may it happen. It might happen. Hunter is alright versus Patron. Hunter's like, alright. And I think it was Handlock that was pretty good as well. Yeah, Handlock is a good matchup for sure. I think mm -hmm. if Banner Muffins wants to get a win, he should get it now versus the, the Midrange Hunter because Warlock is an uphill battle. You can, you yeah. still can win versus Warlock, but you have you need those certain cards. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we'll get into the game here in a second. Uh, it is in fact Trump uh, playing the Hunter deck this time around. Uh, it has a lot to do with the opening hands of both players while. Uh, if the Hunter can get a very aggressive opener and lead into those big threats, uh, it's going to be really hard to stop with the uh, with the Patron Warrior. But if the Patron Warrior can kind of hold that off, you know, draw enough cards, it, you know, the, the Grim Patrons is like the death of Hunter. It's just impossible to really deal with all those uh, little dudes with everyone getting in here. Remember if Trump had a Snake Chop? I think I've, we've seen Snake Chop from Trump at some point. Mm. Um, I think you're right. Snake Chop is actually really weird versus Patron because when you when you get it early, it's not that efficient. Uh, there are so many whirlwind effects, and uh, if you somehow get Snake Chop later because you had to play Mad Scientist and you get that Snake Chop, it might actually help the Patron to win. <laughs> Angry Chicken, oh man, this is getting this is getting serious. What do you think about this play over the Ghoul? I, whenever I can get a Taskmaster value, I go for it as well. Uh, you set up, you set up a two-two on board, so you can uh, you stop the juggler from being played. Like you can't really silence it. So, so kill a minion, you stop the juggler. Uh, so that's a very good play to to stop their aggression from from hunter. And uh, right now with the ghoul follow-up, we can see that he's basically denying the the board. Hmm. 
Overall, I think Bandit Muffins is a pretty good hand versus Hunter because he was able to counter the early aggression. He is frauding if he, if he chooses to play frauding as a proactive card to, to just trade. And uh, he is Acolyte for the card draw and he has a Torison on six. So overall, it looks pretty nice. Even though he didn't get weapons and weapons are amazing versus aggro decks, uh, that um, gives him the way to fight. And, and for Trump, uh, well, the web spinner got stomped. He got a really bad beast from, from it, but still, uh, he has the curve. He has that animal companion. He has the, the shredder. Well, he has to kind of deal with this board because uh, a lot of the creatures are very synergistic in the Green Patron deck. Um, so he might actually, yeah, he does decide to kill command so he can get, uh, finally, get board control. Um, he had the option Animal Companion. Uh, the Huffer would have uh, basically had the same effect as the kill command. Um, but uh, the other options may have ended much worse. Yeah, uh, that was a good choice. Now he has the, the silence for Acolyte of Pain and he wants to deny the draw. Uh, so another turn that he will not But it's not terrible. Uh, you might even play the Angry Chicken now. It's not like... Okay, think... passively... You can go with Animal Companion here. He just plays on Curve. On Curve is good. So not, not respecting the card draw for Patron. Interesting. He wants to be more aggressive here. Well, it worked out for him in the uh, mech shaman match. It's just that this hunter deck is not quite as aggressive as his shaman. I would like kind of to play the owl and um, angry chicken, even though it's not that strong on board. And those are the creatures you don't want to play later. Like whenever mm -hmm. you get to turns where patron can be unleashed with war song, you don't want to place those those creatures. Do not give them minions. Uh, well, with Iron Big Owl now, there was only one card from Acolyte, so it's not terrible. And uh, yeah. actually, maybe it worked out for him um, better. Yeah, it worked out pretty well, I'd say. Um, really, the, the worst animal companion there was Amisha. Actually, I think Leok was one of the better ones, as he's quite likely to maintain board control over the next few turns. I think there's some merit to go for the Owl to protect your Leok from a weapon. Mm, you, you... you give... You give up one damage, uh, your board is just as weak to like uh, a whirlwind effect. But I feel with the owl, you protect the Liok, and with board control and Dr. Boom next, that's much more important. But he's still attacking the frotting, like you can't leave the frotting. So now, hmm. Right. All right, it's not, it's not bad. I like it as well. I'd probably like Liok better because then you get more damage this turn. You get one more damage. I, I think if it was like two or three more damage, you're, you're probably right. That's just one. You're, you're gonna get that one damage in a lot of cases back. Like, I think I think if Liak was buffed, it would get uh, executed here for sure. Instead, I think we're going for the Doomsayer option. Oh, man! Bon and Buff is just face palming right now. <laughs> he doesn't have one. the... He doesn't have the Wyrmwind effect as well. Yeah. This is tough. This is very tough. So there is 9 damage incoming. I think here you actually prioritize damage. I think you might get rid of the Patient Assassin because it's not really going to hit anything great. Uh, just so you can push for 3 extra damage off of the Houndmaster. Yeah, I like it. You basically attack for 7 and play Dr. Boom. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's turn 7, there is no coin, so you know that no possibility of Warsong Patron. And even if, oh, he picks up the whirlwind, but right now those bombs are going to deal so much damage. He has to pick up an execute as well. Maybe BGH, not really. Nope. That is game over. All right. Wow. wow. Yeah. Trump with potentially a full reversal. It is starting to happen here. Trump is on his last deck with Warlock, and Buddy Muffins is also still on his last deck playing Grim Patron Warrior, the deck that I feel he played exceptionally well against Ecop. I think he's still playing quite well, but it's just not really working out for him. Trump's getting the cards, he's getting the aggression. I feel Trump is, is really uh, you know, in the zone right now in terms of uh, in terms of his playability and he's making it happen. Oh, I think definitely. it's actually pretty damn hard to win against this Warlock deck because Buddy Muffins not only his playstyle but his deck is centered around draw. And uh, drawing a lot of cards uh, may not necessarily guarantee a win against, uh, you know, a well-played handlock. 
yeah, uh, that's certainly true. And uh, uh, Trump had played a lot of handlock in his time. Uh, also, I, if I get a feel that Trump is trying to counter uh, Green Patron, so that his lineup is actually prepared to stop Green Patron uh, from winning. And uh, that's a very difficult matchup, but we've seen this in the Forsen match as well. Forsen tied the series after being 0-2, and then mm -hmm. he went into the final match uh, with a pretty much good matchup, and he lost. Yeah. Well, it can happen. Uh, Bunny Muffins uh, considering his options here. Uh, the Ghoul is not very good against Handlock. The Inner Rage is basically useless against Handlock. I think the Slam is quite a nice one. Just softening up those big minions, maybe triggering an execute and drawing an extra card. I think Slam really plays, um, really works with uh, Bunny Muffins and his deck's uh, playstyle here. It's not a bad card, you can cycle it, but I'm. You certainly mulligan Enrage and Unstable Ghoul. You're looking for Acolyte of Pain. Mm -hmm. uh, you might be looking for more draw, like, let's say, Battle Rage. Um, you can keep the slam because you won't draw essentially. To win this match, you will need Warsong, you will need Frodding, and you possibly need a Torison as well, so that you have a big Frodding that will win the game on one turn, mm -hmm. and you need it fast. Well, Trump actually might be playing Dragonlock, right? Because he's got the Imp Gang boss. Oh, oh yeah, that's actually true. You don't play this in, uh, in Handlock. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess it's just been a while and we just uh, forgot what he was actually playing. But it looks like Trump is playing Dragonlock. What does that change? So it's still a good matchup. It's not that great as Handlock, but it's, it's very decent, especially with, with those early minions. If he can just fight for the board, he gets the clear with the Hellfire. Uh, Twilight Drake is hard to deal with. And uh, if he wins the board versus Green Patron, he, he pushes with damage, and then he will have the burst spells. So Defender mm -hmm. of Argus is really important. I, I think Trump is still in a very good position to win the match. Yeah, certainly. All right, well, you don't really want Imp Gang Boss into that. Normally, you could probably coin that Twilight Drake, but uh, Green Patient has too many um, possibilities to draw cards uh, mm -hmm. with the Acolyte of Pain. Just, uh, you kind of block Acolyte of Pain because it will have to attack into Acolyte of, uh, into the Twilight Drake, but double Inrage and suddenly Acolyte draws three cards and you, you take a lot of damage. Another thing I'm noticing is um, double Gnomish Inventor. I feel like one was standard, but did, did two actually become standard as well, or is this yeah. Bunny Muffin style? Uh, like recently, most of the players, they pack double, especially after Show um, got the first place on European mm -hmm. server. The more cantrips you have, like double Slam, double uh, uh, Gnomish Inventor, um, so that you draw all the cards earlier, uh, became the staple. Mm -hmm. Oh man, double Corruptor, and he has a dragon, so he will get full value out of them. Uh, well, not exactly. From what it seems right now, it would probably just hit the Acolyte. Did he attack with Twilight Drake? He didn't yet, right? No, I don't think so, because so, it, it would have killed the Gnomish. So I like uh, just ki killing the Gnomish and then playing Corruptor to kill the Acolyte. Uh, you play around Execute and you build up a very big board. So mm -hmm. you force uh, Patron into dealing with your minions, actually. Harrison Jones is blank. I right, want well, more passive play from the uh, Grim Patron Warrior. Kind of as expected. Hmm. If he picks up a, something like Mortal Call, alright? I, I... Poison, oh man. He doesn't hit any combo cards. But uh, he hits a lot of good cards in his hand. That's uh, seven mana crystals that he just got. Mm. That's why I really like this deck, Malagus Warlock. Uh, it's so flexible. It, it doesn't only rely on the combo. You can just uh, play, those, those, play those high quality minions. Well, at this point, Trump will just gain the board. There is no bro for Bunny Muffins. And uh, with Defender of Argus, it, it's kind of like Handlock. You will have to go for all those big minions, and you can't get Patrons because all those minions have uh, free plus attack. Yeah, seems like uh, seems like a pretty decent matchup. There's so many options here. Bunny Muffin's shaking his head. He probably can't believe he's uh, 
he's in a bad spot after being up 2-0 against Trump with what's probably one of his uh, better decks, just based on how he's played it. Uh, imagining that... Uh, oh, man, he's double rolling. It's yeah. not too bad, actually. Well, he pulls the trigger, but there is a Hellfire. Uh, so yeah. this is a risky play. Uh, it makes sense. You hope that there is no AoE. Mm -hmm. And you clear the board, you have to clear Torisan, so you gain gain up a lot. But then with a single Hellfire, Trump will be able to Hellfire and Corruptor on the same turn, doing six damage to face and setting up a big minion. Uh, I think it's probably better Twilight Drake. Don't you think? I think just a bigger minion and flexibility to do uh, direct damage to a creature might be better. Like he's still holding the Azure Drake. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, actually, building up a Twilight Drake and uh, keeping Corruptor. I'm thinking if there is any merit in playing um, Imp Gangboss as well, but you probably want to hold to Imp Gangboss because you've seen one patron. Uh, still, there is a possibility of Warsong patron on turn 8, so you might not want to play Imp Gangboss ever in this matchup. Mm -hmm. Oh, it actually goes with Azure Drake. Okay, to fill up the mana curve a little bit better. Azure Drake also provides a possibility for um, damage draw. Uh, he does play Dark Dark Bomb, Soulfire, and uh, that might be key to win this match. Or even just, you know, getting that Malagos and a Soulfire. There it is. There is that Malagos. A golden Malagos, even. You gotta make it golden. It is a silver bullet of the deck. Okay, what so options do you have here? You can Argus up uh, if you want to maybe push for some damage. Um, what about tap? Oh, so far is not bad. You kind of want to save that now you have Malagos. Yeah, that's 9 points of damage um, out of nowhere on turn 10. Oh, it looks like a Twilight Drake into an Imp Gang boss for 2 mana. Oh man, I would never play Imp Gang boss in this position. Gangos and Defender Vargas is right, but... Well, I don't think you want to burn your coin. That's a risky play. And he doesn't have a Shadow Flame, so if there will be a Patron pick, a full board of Patrons will just uh, emerge. Bunny Muffin's shaking his head still. Yeah, Not much Muffin's play still. here. Yeah, he's just on the receiving end of, like, way too many cards and way too much combo. So, I think for Banner Muffins, the only chance to win will be to get the Froddings and then hope that he will have enough whirlwind effects. Like, maybe Death Spite into Frodding, but he might not have enough time. Trump is well, off the tools. Yeah, Trump is 7 damage off lethal with... Uh... Oh, no, 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 he doesn't, he doesn't have that 11th mana crystal with the coin. Uh, he's 9 damage off lethal. I was thinking Malagos, Soulfire, Coin, Abusive Sergeant, but he's on, he's on 9 mana right now, he's not on 10. I, I think for Trump now, just playing Defender of Argus and um, Coraptor, that's 7 mana, that's pretty good. And uh, he has to kill Armorsmith, because in case that there is a lot of patrons, you don't want to see the, a lot of life gain. But uh, you're at the point where you want to start pushing some serious damage. Okay. Well, it looks like he's doing Corruptor on the uh, on the Armor Smith, probably. Oh wait, that's kind of interesting. Okay. He's just uh, Argusing up the Imp Gang bosses. He kind of missed a bit of damage, but then he is protecting his Twilight Jake from Execute. Um... Which I guess is just a different line of play. I'll probably just attack the Armorsmith with Twilight Drake and uh, deal 6 damage to face instead. But uh, Bunny Muffins is nothing. Like He has to in the rage for the for the battle rage. Doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, execute. Okay. Add another execute. Bunny Muffins is like, okay, well, these have been good earlier. How much damage is there for Trump? That's 10 plus 6, 16 points of damage, and um, 7 in hand, 9 in hand, 25, so that's lethal, on my end at least. 
He's got, yeah, he's got 11 in hand. So it's, yeah, it's pretty obvious that it's lethal here. Trump's got like way too much damage. Oh no, it's not 11 hand because it's, uh, he can't play the abusive sergeant. Well, he can, but it's only worth one one damage. Ten in hand. All right. Yeah, I was just, I was just looking at um, dark bomb so far and abusive, but. Wow, Trump with the full reversal still in the tournament passes through Bunny Muffins. Bunny Muffins looks uh, like he's not really enjoying uh, Hearthstone. Hearthstone too much right now. Them head shakes. Oh man, it it really All sucks right. for him. Yeah, it does. Uh, Trump will be facing Dog in uh, one of the semifinals today, but we still have to fill the spots for the other semifinal. We will have Gara versus Zele coming up in a little bit here, followed by Lothar versus Migori. And we will have those semifinals filled. We will have the semifinals played. We'll have the finals played. And in the end, we will have our HTC recharged champion crowned. Uh, pretty good game so far. But uh, I do want to apologize for the stream going down uh, several times throughout this broadcast. Uh, there are some issues uh, with Twitch that we're trying to resolve. And to resolve them, we will have to um, take the stream down for a few minutes, uh, probably close to 15 minutes or so. So I'm sorry about that, guys. I know it sucks to have the term interrupted and stuff, but we do want to give you guys a uh, good Good, like a, a good to watch experience. Uh, we don't want to interrupt the action. We don't want you guys to miss the cool moments. So uh, for, for that to improve, um, we will have some downtime. And uh, after that, we will get to see the Gara versus Zele match. Hope you guys are enjoying the show still. In the break, in the downtime, um, you know, if you guys want to check out our sponsor for the tournament, HTC, of course, they have a promotion. They're doing 50 bucks off their phone products. If you guys want to check that out, if you guys want to take advantage of the offer, make sure you guys check the description of the stream. There's a little bit of info about that. If you do want to check out their phones, they have some pretty good products. And uh, well, maybe you want to play Hearthstone on your phone and have all the other cool things on it. So that's a pretty good way to get that done. Okay. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We'll be back in uh, not too long, about 15 minutes. See you guys then.